The 98 squad, um, I was a young boy growing up. It's a team that I really admired. That was the first time Nigeria won the African Cup of Nations in our own soil here in Lagos. And we had, you know, best to get a Bay in goal. Of course, we have David Adili, and the two fullbacks, Adili and uh, OK Sima, who was a midfield player, but converted to play as a, as a left back. And two centre backs, captain Christian Chuku and Tunde Bamidele. We had midfield of um, late Mudalawa and late Aloysio Satwebu. We had um, Adukia Mesimeka on the side. Shegun Debami was on the right side, occasionally playing in the middle because they were always changing positions. He found Yedikan, of course, uh, the young man Henry Wosu was coming on there, he was quite young. At some point, Yedikan was up there and then Wosu comes behind him a little bit. But later on, I still saw a couple of national teams after 80, we have 82, 84. You know, we, we always like, I say winner because Nigeria as a country has been known for, you know, flair and that's why our strength has always been on the wings. The emergence of Clement Emile came, Humphrey Dobo came on the wing, James Togobe, uh, Tarila Koro Wanta, Ndubisi Okosieme, Friday Lau, name it. Our strength has always been on the wing. When Westhoff came on board, um, he he took his time and selected the personnel, the kind of football he wants to play. So we look at wing play and we have we look at technique as well. For you to have a formidable team, you have to look at the spine of the team as well, the personnel. We're not talking about spine of the team, in Holland we call them the axe. You have to have a solid goalkeeper who is commanding. We must have one centre back who is very, very commanding as well. In, as at that time we had late Keshi, of course. Uh, one who took over, we had Ulisse. So if you look at this straight line, you can see that's a spine. So when all this is stable, all the other ones can actually fill in those gaps and we have a, st a stable team. So when the axe, which is a spine, is very, very solid, then the way to go becomes very difficult for opponents. Again, when a team is, is set up to play, remember there's always team function. Function of the defenders of the entire team is to defend. It doesn't really mean that only defenders are involved in defensive duties. And then you have team function going forward, and we cannot leave the bulk of going forward only to the to the attackers as well. So, and in these functions, there is also a task to be achieved. And we know defense has the task of not letting in goals. The strikers have the task of scoring. And to, not to let in go, in, in this team function we have task, collective task and individual task as well. I remember one of the games we played in the USA against Bulgaria and Co. We know how Stoichkov was. Um, what we try to do, the two fullbacks mo must prevent crosses. So that's individual task. So if opponents are moving up into position, especially teams that play from the wing, the first thing we do as a team is to make sure you, you, you deny them of crosses. So how do you do that? When a winger comes all the way, you must try as much as possible to make sure he doesn't get crosses into the box so it be, doesn't become dangerous. And by so doing, of course, they're gonna have support, the teams that are coming forward, and we have the next center back who is gonna come in here. And in this case, we have Sunday Ulisse who comes in here and what we do, try to force them to the line. So the best thing they can do now is to do what? Play the ball backwards, all the way backwards and force them. Because if you don't do that, and you get crosses into the box, it becomes really, really, really dangerous. But going forward, we know we have speed in legs of Tijani Babangida, Finish the George, of course, um, uh, Emmanuel Monique. That is where we, when we have possession, we, we're not a team that plays direct. We indirect, but we mix it up. Depends on how high, how high the opponent comes. When the opponent comes really high into our own half, what we do, we try as much as possible to make the field as big as we can. So in this case, we see Rufai has the ball, Aguavon moves here, 
need it to the line, close to the line, not just to the line. Amunike comes in here, you are also close to the line. So what we're doing now is we ask Olise, or West of ask Olise to at least drop in here to ask on the ball from Pitaro Fire. So if the ball is coming to Keshi, let Keshi or Little Kafo or Wanu, or vis a vis on the other side, we have, we have um, Okechuku. Sometimes Taribu also came in. If they come in here to try to do what? Deny him of the ball. What he does, it, it takes this opponent away. And then, if he goes in there to pressure, Siasia comes in here, or Mutu, or whoever is on, on the field on that day comes in here. Then the ball is being served through the middle. And once he turns on the ball, you see, because they're playing so wide, these guys stay narrow, because they know if they commit themselves, then what they have here is two against one, which becomes very, very dangerous. That is why you see, Amokachi, who is playing behind Yakini, has all this space because he's so, you know, he's playing on the line, playing on the line. But if he decides to pinch him, which ideally all defenders should do, because the easiest way to go is the middle. If they do this, then what we do? Finidi is on his bike, Amonike is on his bike, and the long one is coming over there. So what we have now is we, at some time we go, 100 kilometers an hour to make sure we add up the numbers. That is exactly why, how we scored the first goal against Bulgaria. Rufai had the ball, the Guavones op opens up, Ira opens up, she is slightly to the, to the right, Okechuku slightly to the left. And of course, I uh, hold the Mifi player, the best Mifi in the world at that time, Sonu Lise was out there. See, I, see, I remember playing that game, it was floating. Finidi, like we say, when we have the ball, we try to make the field very, very big, as big as possible. And then we have, he's always playing off the shoulder, that's um, Yakini, always the show, off the shoulder of defenders. So when they come behind him, Daniel Amokachi, if they are not too close, has the liberty now to exploit those, those, those holes. But then if they come here, at some times Finidi comes in here and then I'm gone. But more, more often, the manager then, West Half, didn't want me to actually go too much in front because he had more security. He felt with myself, Chidi and, and um, Anokichuku, we have secured back four, in quote, but actually back three. So that's why most of the time, you see, Amunike comes in here. Iroha is always, you know, have the opportunity to go. He has to go anyway because we have holding Mifi player, Ulisse, who is actually in control of it. So when Ulisse joins us, we have four at the back. So on this day in the first game, first goal, the ball came to, to Okechuku, who played the ball through to Siasia, and then Siasia straight up to Yekini. Amokachi was right behind. He knocked the ball back and into space for George Fenidi. And then on the bike, Everyone were there, and then the cross from from Finidi George. The cross came in from Finidi George, and then Yakini came in just in front there. And he came right behind this guy for for, for a goal. It was the very first time at the World Cup, which is a big stage, biggest stage for any football player, and we. When we got about to come out in the game and after inspection, we were a bit panicking because it was the very first time the World Cup experience and Rose Bowl, yeah, Rose Bowl, I guess, in Dallas, it's quite huge. And we could see that in the eyes of these Bulgarians, you could see that they were a little bit scared. I wouldn't say scared, probably they had a little respect for us. And we just communicated among us, like, hey, guys, it looks like these guys are a little bit... Because we were tough and big anyway. Maybe 15 out of 23 were six with us in that team. So it was good enough. And we immediately we said, we have to go for it. And we went for it and it paid off. The game plan against Toyshkov was 
As soon as he holds the ball, we have to do what? Try to double team. Not with the centre back. If he's in this area, what I do is I come in here, Olise comes in here. What is he trying to do? You know, I come. To Mark, try to do what? Push him to the side. Olise comes in here. Um, she's the one who provides this, this, this balance. I go, he covers, he provides balance. Of course, the other guys have to come in. And the best thing he can do, he can't go over us. He has to take the ball to the side and force him to play backwards. And once he comes back, drops in the midfield to try to, to do something, we have Olise, we have Finidi, and we have Siasia, like a triple team, keeping in the middle. So he did not too much, well, because he couldn't, he wasn't allowed. If he has the ball, he plays the ball to his teammate. He has the ball, he plays the ball to his teammate. And we try as much as possible not to let any of them come close to the middle. The best thing we can do or we can offer them is to go to the side. And when they go to the side, we have a very strong spine here that you can't break. It's difficult to plan against Maradona, you know, may uh, so rest in peace. I think Amando Maradona is one of the best players I've ever played against. I think he's one of the best players on earth until he passed away. We did our best, if not for, I would say, the loss of concentration. That was where football intelligence comes in. And at that stage, because it was our first time, it was a bit difficult. We, we were just, that's the only chance they had, actually. You know, we were trying to form a wall. You know, we had a back four. I think we had no about five in the wall in this position. And Rufai was was right there trying to set up the wall, which is which he should do ideally. And Kanija was just there. I would say I I take the blame. Why? Why am I taking the blame? So for you to set up a wall, you have to turn completely to face your goalkeeper, tell you what he wants. I turned, I was looking at Rufai, and he said, okay, moving a little bit, okay, wall is set, wall is okay. As soon as I was turning back to now face the ball, that was when Maradona slotted the ball to Canadia. So I would say it's a bit naive, and that's, that's inexperience. All the teams we played against had respect for Nigeria. Having humiliated Bulgaria against all odds, and then coming into the second game, beat Greece, 2-0, clear goals. And playing Argentina, they had a lot of respect for us. Because if you look at the stats on that day, there was not too much of a difference. And we had our moments, we took them. Brilliant goal, one of the best goals scored by our own legendary Sam Sinsiasia. And if not for that mistake, there's no way they would have come back. Like I said earlier, it's because of inexperience. Yes, you see, when you have a team, and a team is always a team. A team of 22 before, now it's 23, that goes to the tournament, all three are eligible, eligible to play. And you, you form your team based on what you have. You play to your strength. In the 80s, yes, late Mudalawa, late Atwebu, they were all good ball carriers, but not as technical. Um, or as dynamic, or as dynamic as you know, you have the JJs and the Wobies today, and it was easy for them to also win games because the way they approach the game, they have a style, which means they relied on Shagunde Bami on the side, and Duke Messi Maker on the side. Sometimes Felix Owolabi on the side, and then later on Humphrey Dubov, Ilao, and Co. Babangirana came in. But when West Half came, he saw. Um, a team on ground, and then also then in, in the 80s, I played with Umosu a little bit up to 1988. Umosu, yes, flamboyant player as well, Eti Mason, good player, technically very strong, Friday, but, but you know, Umosu normally plays behind the strikers. So it's a little bit difficult to do things from that position. For you to be a creative Mifi player, who can assist your team going forward, who can get those balls, those balls to the wingers, you know, 50 meters balls across, diagonal balls for them to go in and get crosses in the box for the oncoming strikers to score, then you have to play a little bit deep like JJ does. 
But Umo Sudan in 1980 was very close to whoever was playing under there as a striker, so it was a bit difficult. When West Half came, and then imagines of people like JJ came. So, and JJ sometimes drops all the way, takes the ball, he can do his thing, he can give 60 meters pass, diagonally depends on the opponent's setup. If they are high up, yes, he can do that. For Finidi, for Amunike, for Elaho and Co to go on, and Bazwa and Co. But if they are not high up, then he can play those, those little one tools and then he can outwit people, he can do his thing. So for Nigeria actually to be actually really effective with a playmaker, which we resorted to when West Half came. We, when we have the ball, we know that we have one player, a unique player who can turn things around, can do things or create things out of nothing in the person of JJ. And we resorted to that. So all, but not all balls, but most of the time, even opponents, they understood that, that when JJ has the ball, they have a problem. When Kanwaku also came later on, he wasn't in our team, he wasn't in our team, but the young man growing up, but he came in, he, I think he traveled with us, it was just quite unfortunate that he was not in the USA 94 squad. Deserved to be there, but he can't take more than 23. And that's why after that he came in. And Kanu as well have the ability also, but JJ is kind of quite completely different. JJ and Ulisse, from here, they can hit a pass here. From here, they can hit a pass here. But Kanu, it's a little bit of a replica of Henry Wosu, more closer to the striker, sometimes play up there. So it's difficult to say. So we will say Nigeria's philosophy we, is a team that wants to build from the back. We mix it up. When it's time to go long, depends on how the opponent is reacting, we go long. And when we know we're going long, we know there's a signal. Everybody has to do what? Squeeze in and cover the space so that second balls will always win. Second balls will always win. So we move as a unit. 11 here, 11 here. 11 here, 11 here. I haven't followed football. When I see, when I see Ejuke, Chidera, today, I, I think that young man has got a lot of potentials. If properly used, if, if encouraged as well. And Chukweze as well, when I see Chukweze on the flank, you can see he's like, it's a baby. He still has a lot. And I think he can still achieve a lot. Chukweze, in fact, the entire team. And when I see, when I see um, Wilfred Ndidi in the midfield, yeah, not 100% like Ulisse, but I think he's on his way to become one of the best defensive midfield players in the world. But he's holding back as far as I'm concerned. He's got a lot to, to still give, but I think he's holding back. I've, I've spoken to him once or two occasions. Reason why he's holding back, I don't know. When I say holding back, I think he can do better with, with, than what he's doing. He's got potentials, a lot. And then, when I see Osime, it reminds me of strikers who can keep you on your toe as a defender the entire 90 minutes. The entire 90 minutes. If you blink, he will punish you. So I think Osime is one player that really, really excites me when it comes to attacking. And of course, skill-wise, talk about Chidera, Chukwezi, and uh, Iyanacho. Iyanacho is okay, is okay, but the only little problem is in Leicester, he's playing a different position. He comes to Nigeria, he's playing a different position. I think the sooner he settles for one position, I think the better for him. As the technical director of Nigerian Football Federation right now, I think uh, uh, it's my responsibility to see how we can um, come up with a philosophy, a pathway to, to make sure Nigerian football actually you know, goes higher and higher and higher. And one of the things we've, we've mapped out in, in, the, in the department to do uh, is to make sure we have a very formidable team starting from the young ones, the under 17, all the way work, under 15, and walk them through until we win the World Cup, and um, which a lot of people think is not possible. But I can tell you, uh, with the encouragement we're having and the support we're still going to get, sooner or later we'll win the World Championship. And um, one of the things is 
If you look at our team before now, I told you earlier on, about 15 out of 25 of 23 of that squad were six footers. We train a lot and in West of selecting that team, he took his time. So one of the things we are looking at also now, you must possess two of those three qualities. If not, I'm not sure we'll look at your direction. We want to look at sit and watch. What does sit and watch means? S is for speed and strength. I is for intelligence. And T is for technique. So if you have, if you have speed, you fit into it. If you have strength, you fit into it. If you football intel, if you have football intelligence, when we talk about football intelligence, it's not about two plus two or chemistry or biology here you now. It's knowing what to do at the right time. It's thinking before the ball gets to you. It's doing things out of nothing. And obviously you cannot rule out technique. So when you have, if you're technically very good and you have speed, we accommodate you. If you have all three, super. If you are, if you are strong and you have technique, is also okay. So, for you to be in our team now, you have to have two out of those qualities. And to pick those boys, we are trying to see how we can develop coaches who are going to impact this knowledge into the boys as well. Because if you put a bunch of boys out there and then they are not guided properly, they are not coached in the right way, it's difficult also for them to achieve or um, be successful in what we want them to do. So once our coaches are knowledgeable enough to transfer this knowledge to the young ones, I think we are, we are, we are going to do very well in the nearest future.